Okay, guys. Howdy. So, uh, sorry it's been so long um, to pop out a new video. It seems to be our, uh, uh, just the way we are sometimes getting stuff out with uh, um, just being really busy because we're trying to focus as much as we can on the area we're at. Plus, this isn't a, a vacation. We still work. Um, but anyway, this next video is really hard for me to do and just looking at parts of the foot, it still still gives me PTSD. Um, you know, you, you're thinking, oh, er, these guys are going to keep on popping out happy, great videos, and everything's just going to go fine, or whatever. Or, or maybe you're the one that's thinking, yeah, something's going to happen. Well, something happened. It was something I did. It was d a dumb mistake. But anyway, we're past it now. But I want to put this video away, get it out there, so you can see what I did and what not to do in the future. Um, and uh, Anyway, so basically in a nutshell, in this next uh, segment we're going to shoot out, um, we were heading um, from Tombstone, Arizona on our way up to the south rim of the Grand Canyon with a little stopover kind of around the petrified forest. Well, uh, we had a, a dispersed camping site that really wasn't real, really marked really well and um, we were with my, my parents, so uh, uh, following behind. Um, them and well we missed our turn well it's a, just a two-lane highway and uh, you know they were able just to turn around and go on back and going in and I happened to have dad with me and I'm like dad you know hey we're gonna need to find a big area here so we can do a big wide you know big old wide turnaround because this bus has got a huge turning radius I mean you basically need a football field to, to turn around uh, well so anyway so we drove up we went up probably about a mile maybe a mile and a half, and I saw the spot. This is gonna work, it's wide enough, you know, sure, and it was, it was wide enough. We had enough room on this side to go and enough room to catch up on that side as we turned around and went on back. However, something that I've never had an issue with before in the past, but you will if you have a big old giant bus like this. Um, number one, the, uh, the ride height, you know, you're only, you might have about this much, and in a normal car, that's that's great and fine. But when you're dealing with so much distance from the front and from the back, you you'll have you know you you, you got to watch what you you're driving over and what you actually go all the way over. My and what ended up happening was we had the turn, we were all the way all the way around. Well, then uh, there happened to be a little dip in the road on the side, so the edge, the side we turned around on. Then you have a little dip and then you have the highway and then you have the, you know the, the open area there well we started our turn came around around the highway the back tires went into that dip which set my back end on the dirt <laughs> and we had the jeep hooked up and everything else so, i mean the only way i was going to get that through was basically pulling that jeep all the way through the through the ground and it just wasn't going to happen tires were spinning and panic attack I'm telling you what, panic attack set in it, and it was, you know, Dad, jump out, hurry up, block, you know, route traffic around, so on and so forth. There, you know, running around with like chickens with their heads cut off. Definitely weren't prepared. Definitely didn't have uh, flares or cones or anything else to stick out. Uh, so that that we have some stuff in our arsenal now, but um, you know, in, in a nutshell, we so we we all kind of got out. It was about. I don't know, seven o'clock at night, so we still had some some daylight. And I thought, well, you know, we do have those hydraulic jacks. Maybe I can get something under there, lift myself up, and and get myself out. However, I just didn't have anything to stick under there. There wasn't anything around, you know, blocks of wood or big giant things to kind of to get me out. Um, and then I would have needed something under the under the tire to, to get on. Anyway. So, in a nutshell, uh, kind of walking you through, because we didn't film this whole thing. We're out trying to get this, this thing's working, so I'm trying to walk you through the steps. So, we basically got out. Dad was directing traffic around the front, because we had a little section of pavement that, that cars could go through. We had traffic coming from the north side and traffic coming from the south side. And our bus was blocking the whole damn highway. And at the time it happened, there wasn't any traffic. But as time started to go on, we did this for about 30 minutes, and we were trying to figure out how we could get the tires off and everything, and Dad finally said, 
you know, he had the voice of reason. He was like, hey, you need to, we need to get somebody involved here. We need to call, you know, authorities or something to help us out here. Because, you know, we're not, we don't know how to really direct traffic, you know, and think about all the, all those things. And it's getting dark. So, you know, I ended up having to call 911, um, called the good Sam, you know, every anybody to try to get a tow truck out there. I knew it was, all it was, just a matter of just kind of getting us off of that. But because of remoteness of where we were, it was going to be three hours for good Sam to send someone out. Uh, the highway patrol finally got there in about an hour. Um, he was directing traffic. He had cones and a light on his side. It got dark. I only had a flashlight on my side. Um, and it was, it was downright scary. I mean, cars were coming there on cruise control in the middle of the night going 75 miles an hour. And, you know, all of a sudden they see somebody stand on the side of the road with a flight. Well, hell, we're down by the border. There's a lot of people that are, you know, sneaking over the border and doing whatever else. They didn't know if we were trying to hijack them or what. So, you know, I had a, a few close calls where cars just came skidding in and almost hit the, hit me or hit the bus. And, uh, luckily... Um, that didn't happen, but you can imagine with all this going on, how, how this would have been just not only embarrassing people driving by, <laughs> you know, who's this idiot, you know, and, uh, it was, it was a learning thing. And, and, and my philosophy is, you know, Hey, if you're not out there doing something, if you're not out there breaking, so if you're not out there making mistakes, then you're not doing anything. You gotta, if you're not making mistakes, you're being too safe and you're not ever going to have any, you know, anything, you're never going to learn. So this was a learning experience for us and hopefully somebody out there is going to see this and they'll think, ah, I remember that guy. He said, you know, be careful because if those wheels go down, you lose that, you know, the, that eight inches or whatever it is and, and you got a little bit of the bus that's behind you that's going to touch the ground, which it did for us, so... Long story short, the wrecker did come. They did exactly what I would have done. They put some blocks underneath the hydraulics. I lifted up the back end. They put another block under the front tire. And then uh, they kind of gave me a little tug in the front and I put it in gear and rolled right off. And we were good to go and we were safe. Um, you know, for the most part, everything's unharmed and pretty good, except for, you know, <laughs> you know, if you if you looked at it as you're not making any, you're not learning anything, then I guess it would be a terrible, terrible thing. But hey, we, it was a it was a mistake, and uh, we move on, and that's how it goes. So anyway, the video got a couple little short little videos I'm gonna throw in there. You can kind of see what's going on, and uh, and then we're gonna move on. Uh, the next video is gonna be, you know, something great and fun. <laughs> but the, I gotta get this one out of the way. So anyway, peace. See you guys on the next uh, next uh, stop and uh, cheers. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life. No shame, there's no time for the pain of the grind. I could change in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win it life. I never miss that fact. Taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat. Put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag. Cause I sing what I mean and I bring it to the mad light. Ain't got time to kill, I got time to fail. I took the red pill. I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but Chris was turning around to come meet us at the campsite and he got stuck in the middle of Arizona Highway 377. So traffic has to divert around. It's getting dark. So that's not good. I don't know what is gonna happen with this whole thing. We did call Good Sam. It was super frustrating. Um, it just was too much rigmarole. Called some stupid shit, guys. I tried to do a u-turn and high centered on the back so these guys here are gonna try to help me out here here we go I'm just gonna film okay guys so what I didn't mention earlier is that this was a four or 
five hour event where we were uh, guiding traffic and trying to get out of here. So this was a, a long day. Finally got the bus moving. I don't know what the damage is or anything. I'll pull up there in a second. I don't know what the damage is to the bus. I don't know what the damage is to our wallet. I don't know what the damage is to Chris's driving record. There's probably gonna be a lot of damage. <laughs> Another thing I don't know if you picked up on, but if you look at my vest I'm wearing there, that's actually a police vest. The uh, highway patrolman loaned me so that I didn't just get ran over, so I had some kind of reflective clothing. And the tire pressure sensor goes off right about now. So anytime it goes below a threshold, it goes off and something about the tow truck jarring the tires around caused the pressure to drop. I also wanted to offer my thanks to Trooper L. Verdugo. He was the guy that came out and helped on the other side direct traffic and loan me the vest and a flashlight temporarily so hats off to him so thanks okay guys now that i got that experience behind me let's move forward um, i want to say thanks to all our subscribers and all the cool friends that we've made along the way um, hey if you haven't liked subscribed and hit the bell please do that um, let's go ahead and just close this video out with with uh, some of the footage that of the trip leading up to this point and then uh, in and around the campfire. So uh, take care. Cheers. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right. The game, win your life, have no shame, waste no time, feel the pain, with the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win in life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag, cause I sing what I mean, and I bring it to the mad light, ain't got time to kill, I got time to fail, I took the red pill, I know life's short, so I wanna live real, but how's it supposed to feel? I don't feel no shame, it's a mood you lack I go crazy, nah bitch I ain't lazy Track after track, I work on this shit daily Pass me the jack, right as fuel got me hazy About to unpack all these things I've been chasing I've got visions in my head Like memories after death To be a legend instead Of something you can forget I'm living up every breath I'd rather leave than be led I'll fill the seats as I spread With every word that I've said